Hi, my name is Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the Keyforge deck that I opened up and got to play with at the pre launch event last Saturday night. This deck uh, led me to win three or two out of three of my matchups. In my first two matchups, it won all three games. Unfortunately, in that first matchup, I foolishly allowed my opponent to have this deck for the third round uh, for the low, low price of six chains and uh, I got beat by my own deck. But uh, in the second round, I managed to, to uh, hold on to it for that third round and, and ride it to victory. In the third matchup, it lost both of the first two games pretty close to another Dis Shadows deck. Uh, I believe their third house was, uh, was untamed. Uh, so it, it lost to that. Uh, but pretty close in the first two ma two games, and then uh, we bid up to four, and at four I let him have his deck and took this one and managed to win. So I'm going to walk you through what's in the deck. First I'll show you the card back, the nice unique art there. And this, this deck is Dis, Shadows, and Logos. The first game of that third matchup actually i'll just leave this off frame there the first game of that third matchup at, by the time that my opponent forged his third key he had well over 30 amber in his pool it was pretty insane all right so let's get started and the first card we're going to look at here is creeping Ob oblivion gains an amber and purges up to two cards from a discard pile uh you know, this this is nice. It is a good way to say, hey, you can't have that back. Uh, I suppose in some matchups, it would be really good. I was never super impressed with it, but it was never bad, and it gains you that amber. So never sad to see it, never too thrilled. Gateway to Dis. Destroy each creature, gain three chains. In certain matchups, this is just uh, absolute clutch. Um, if, if you have... Or playing against an opponent that has a really strong board state, uh, this is your way out of that situation. So pretty important. There were sometimes I, I didn't want to play it, you know, if I was ahead, but sometimes it's very critical. Key Hammer. Now this is where we get into where this can be quite oppressive. Uh, key Hammer gains an amber and unforges uh, a key that your opponent forged on the previous turn. They get their amber back, but... It, it sets them back a turn, and if you combine it with some of the other cards that we'll see, uh, you can really uh, mess with your opponent quite a bit. Mind Barb. Gain an Amber. They lose a card. Net damage. Uh, uh, this is good. It's nice. It's disruptive. Depends on what you hit, I suppose. Dominator Bobble. I've seen in certain decks this be a, a really powerful card. In this deck, it's not it's not that good. It's it's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to get it out there, uh, but because I don't have any... Well, I have some, but I don't have a ton of creatures that I feel like, oh gosh, I, I really want to be using this creature all the time. Uh, it's just not that strong, but it's pretty good. All right, Lash of Broken Dreams. This is a card that combos really well with Key Hammer. It's an artifact, and when you use it, it causes keys to cost three more amber during your opponent's next turn. So you can get into some situations where you hold them off from forging for a turn using this, or uh, sometimes you might even want to use a key hammer to put their amber back in their hand and, and use this, knowing that then they're going to have to pay nine, and that's going to slow them down quite a bit. So either of those situations really is, is pretty okay with me um, and later on when we get into shadow we'll see you know sometimes it can be really nice to force your amber to pile up a lot of amber so pretty good screaming cave this is a, a rare artifact and uh, it causes your or when you use it you shuffle your hand and discard pile into your deck start over um this was this was fine it i don't i mean this is a card game where when you cycle through your deck, you just start drawing it again. So um, this, 
I never felt like I was in a situation where I just had to do this, but it's, it's fine. And I, I guess certain situations where maybe you, you have used a card once you really need that gateway to disc back or something, it gets you there faster. Charette, power four creature. You play it, it captures three, three. Again, this, this factors pretty strongly into this game of slowing down your opponent's forging and putting them in a situation where they might end up with a large pool that could benefit you somehow. So, pretty simple. Dust Imp, two, power two, and when it's destroyed, you gain two. Um, yeah, this is, I. you know, a lot of times it seems to me like opponents will really try to avoid uh, destroying this. So, it's, it's best if you can get yourself in a situation where you're punishing them for not destroying it. Um, there's an upgrade that we'll see later in Shadow that, that could help with that. Um, but really we want to get into a situation where they feel punished for not destroying it and want to destroy it. Or uh, you can always just use it to fight. And even if you don't accomplish much with that fight, you gain the Amber, it's not bad. Uh, Pit Demon. Okay, so this is power five, um, which is, is pretty good, and it, it as an action, it steals one. So basically like reaping, but you take one from your opponent instead. Uh, pretty simple, pretty strong. They'll want to get rid of that. Shackles. At the end of your turn, your opponent loses an amber. Again, drags the game out. Pretty strong, pretty annoying if you can keep it out there. Succubus, power three. During their draw card step, your opponent refills their hand to one less card. Now, uh, you'll see later in Logos, I have Mother, which is essentially the reverse of this. And it's interesting. Uh, opponents feel very motivated to kill Succubus. They really want uh, to get their draw back. So they'll typically try to kill it pretty quickly. But when you have it out there, it's it's nice. It's annoying. Even, you know, for a turn, it's uh, about as strong as Mind Barb, I suppose. So pretty good. They'll want to deal with it. All right. Uh, now we're going to get into into Logos territory. And uh, so we saw with Dis, there's this focus on uh, disrupting the opponent's plan, wiping the board, slowing them down, making things cost more, undoing things. Uh, Logos is uh, about accelerating your state and... Uh, getting some uh, some tempo, really. So um, a, a lot of the things here are focused on that. So I have two lab works, and lab work is uh, a, an, amb uh, an action that gains you one amber, and when you play it, you archive a card. Seems simple. Archiving can be so strong, especially when you have cards like Keyhammer, or later on we'll see Miasma, uh, that you want to save till later. Archive can be really good for those. It frees up your hand space. Uh, Archive is just a, a really powerful mechanic. I haven't seen people be that excited about it, but I'm I'm really excited about Archive. It's so good. So gain the Amber, Archive something. That's fantastic. All right, next, Library Access. Again, really nice card. Uh, Obviously, because of the way it works for the remainder of the turn, each time you play another card, draw a card, this works best with other, if you have a, a handful of other Logos cards, because you play this first, and then you play those, you draw a lot of cards, and, and hopefully some of them are Logos, and you just get to keep going. Um, in, the, uh, in one of the starter decks, this is paired with Wild Wormhole, and that can be super cool, because you... You're playing Wild Wormhole, which is going to draw you one, and then it plays another card. Anyway, I don't have Wild Wormhole, uh, unfortunately, but Library Access is still a great card. I'm, I'm always happy to see it. It's going to get me get me good state, uh, get me a good hand. All right, Positron Bolt, Gain the Amber. Uh, this one, it's going to start, uh, you pick a flank creature. It's going to deal three damage to that, and then work its way inward, doing two and then one. So... That's that's pretty good. Um, I've had I've had this work out pretty well. It obviously depends on uh, you know how things are laid out, but this is pretty good. And that amber, not that's never gonna make me sad. 
two copies of this one, Library of Babel. It's an artifact that lets you, as an action, draw a card. Uh, this just makes you look forward to a turn where you get to play Logos, because you're going to get to, hey, I'm going to have two more cards in my hand, if you have them both out. So, pretty good. And they work really well with uh, another card we'll see soon. All right. Doc Bookden. Power 5, Creature, Human, Scientist, Reap to draw a card. Uh, I almost never get to Reap with Doc Bookden. People seem really intent on uh, on killing her fast. So, don't get to use her a lot, but um, that is a, that's a nice, powerful ability. Gain an Amber and a card that's strong. Um, Ganymede Archivist. Reap, Archive a card. Oh, man. Again, I haven't got to actually use that ability very much because uh tends to get killed but uh if you keep it out a few turns reap archive a card you're gonna have a nice archive for power turn later or for you know dealing with whatever situation that you end up in so gives you good good strategy planning ability all right quickso the adventurer uh, aka brad andries um so this is a three power creature uh it has skirmish so when you fight with it it doesn't get damage it, it only deals damage obviously when when it gets attacked it takes damage but when it starts to fight it doesn't take damage and when it when he fights he draws a card so again really cool uh, people don't seem to like leaving that out for me to use but it's pretty cool mother so here's what i was talking about the the opposite of succubus and let me pull succubus out here so if I put these cards side by side, you can see, you know, they're, they're pretty much the opposite of each other, right? Mother uh, lets you draw an additional card and Succubus makes them draw one fewer card, one less. Um, people, I guess maybe it's because of the five power. People seem very content to leave Mother out and uh, very quick to kill Succubus. And, and I get it because I think that, you know, they feel the pain of the succubus more but mother getting to draw an extra card at the end of every turn that's so huge and uh this this deck doesn't have a lot of chain stuff in it but even so just getting to have a, a bigger hand size that's you know that makes it a lot more likely what would have been you know a two 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 hand is now a two two three and um it's it's pretty great i had my first game i played at the uh at the the turn that i forged uh, that i forged my third key I had seven uh, seven logos cards in my hand, including uh, including library access because of mother. So, um, just really strong. And people don't seem to uh, value it as highly as they do succubus. Titan mechanic, a little bit of a double edged sword on this one. So six power, it's good. Um, while it's on a flank, each key costs one less. Good for you also good for your opponent so just be aware of that it it's each key not just yours but uh at the right moment really nice and valen analyst so uh this this little thing here uh lets you gain an amber every time you use an artifact and you can see if you have uh you know you get this on the board and then use your uh, use your library of babbles. Suddenly, your each of those is essentially reaping and drawing you a card like Doc Bookman would. So you're getting an amber and a card. Uh, and you know, and then if if he stays out, which he's only two power, so he's easy to kill. But if he does stay out, then then you go into a, you know you go into a dis turn where you use Dominator Bobble and uh, Lash of Broken Dreams and maybe even the uh, the one that, that reshuffles your hand or that, that uh, reshuffles your deck, fills in your deck. Um, you know, in each of those you're going to get an Amber for. So that, this is this is pretty strong. I, I like it and I think people did seem to realize it was worth killing quickly. All right, now we're into Shadow territory. Um, truly evil, really annoying. Again, I, this this I just felt like comboed super well with this because 
uh, with this, I could I could slow them down. Maybe they would have had you know, uh, maybe they would have had four after forging, but now they only have one. You drop a ghostly hand on them, really ruin their day. So ghostly hand uh, gives you two amber, which is strong right off the bat. And uh, if your opponent has exactly one, you steal it. Uh, it still you know tends to be worth playing, even if your opponent doesn't have one. Um, I, I'd rather time it to do it that way, but if it's going to push me over the edge, you know, if I know, okay, I can do shadows this turn. If I'm if I'm doing shadows on a turn, I'm probably just going to play this. I'm not going to save this, unless maybe I archive it. But even even then, you know, I want to get I want to get those two amber, even if I'm not stealing and making it a four swing. It's swinging by two is still pretty good, you know. So anyway, two of those actually, but I, I think that's a really really nice card. And yeah, when you can pull it off, so you're you're doing a four amber swing by stealing one of theirs and then gaining two on top of that. That's just oh, so brutal. All right, hidden stash. You play it and you get to archive a card and it gives you an amber. Uh, again, this this is really great, especially having the two uh, the archive from from out of logos. Um, this just means I get to archive more. So, uh, gives you an opportunity to have a nice, strong archives. Archive. Uh, there's my net runner coming out. All right, lights out. Gain an amber. Return two enemy creatures to their owner's hand. Uh, you know, you got to think through this one a little bit. Probably don't want to use it on creatures that have play effects. Or they just get to repeat those. Um, you know, you use it to push a, a Charat back into the their hand, and um, you know they, they can just play it next turn if they want. Now, if you feel like, hey, um, they don't they don't have maybe they have, you know, uh, a bunch of creatures from one house and and one each from their other two, and you and you think, aha, well I can I can push those back even if they do have play effects, and it's really gonna. Uh, clog up their hand for a while. It could be good, but um, usually you, you want to get rid of things that are just annoying and going to be hard to deal with. Maybe things that you don't like being in the position they're in. Um, things like that. So, uh, the, the position on the battle line, I mean. So, that, that's lights out. It's it, it's pretty good. Um, depends on the situation, but it's pretty good. Okay. Next, Miasma. And this one, there's, there's two of them. And Oh my gosh, this is a great card. Miasma is an action, uh, gains you an amber, and your opponent skips forge a key on their next turn. And uh, having two of them is, is just crazy because you can you can do things like uh, you know you can stop them one turn with the, the lash of broken dreams by you know just driving the cost too high. Then the next two turns, you play a Miasma each turn uh, and can get them into a situation where they just have a, a lot of Amber built up. Um, and we'll come back to why that would be awesome. But uh, Nerve Blast uh, doesn't give you any Amber but uh, just for the card, but it lets you steal one. So obviously only useful if your opponent has one. And uh, if you do manage to steal one, then you deal two damage to a creature. Pretty nice. Get you get that amber two two amber swing and uh, hit something maybe something that you know has elusive or something like that so you, you wouldn't be able to damage it by fighting and it's a good way to to get that damage in. And this is why here's why we want our opponents to build up a bunch of amber is so that so that we can end up playing too much to protect. And uh, too much to protect gains you an amber just for fun. And then it steals all but six of your opponent's amber. So if you can get them in a situation where you've, you've driven up the cost so they couldn't get it, and then they, they get up nine, and then you, you play Miasma, and then they're just playing and they're, they're getting more because they're thinking, oh, well, I'll, I'll forge a key and then I'll, I'll be ready to forge another one. Maybe use another Miasma. You, they get up, you know. Maybe they're at 12 now, and then you play this. It's just, it's just great. Um, now, I think uh, as 
as people get to, you know, expect this sort of thing, they'll start to play around it. And certainly if I know it's in the opponent's deck, uh, I, I'm going to play a little differently because, because uh, it's strong, you know, but um, it's going to be, it's just really good. All right. Bad Penny. One power. And when she's destroyed, she goes back to your hand. That's it. Pretty simple. Um, but she can be pretty good. Bullet Eye. Two power. Elusive. And uh, when she reaps, she destroys a flank creature. So nice way to, to deal with stuff that, you know, that's like, uh, you know, gateway to disc can just wipe the whole board. But if you have bullet eye out and just keep whittling away at the flanks, then, then that can be a pretty good way to keep, um, to keep the enemy's board state down. Silver tooth. Two power and enters play ready. Nice for just getting in a quick reef or uh, whatever it happens to be. And then finally, Dusk Runner. That's my one upgrade. And Dusk Runner gives whatever it's attached to reap steel one. So, I mean, if you can attach. Well, Dusk Runner is good on almost anything, right? Not Pit Demon because that wants to steal, not reap, but uh, it wants to use its action, not reap, but but almost anything else, this is really good on. Um, I used it sometimes on Silvertooth, because um, you can, if you have them both in your hand, you just play the Silvertooth, throw the Dusk Runner on, and you can use it, you know, you can use them both that turn. If you already happen to have, uh, you know, a Bullet Eye Out or something like that, or, or a Doc Booked In, uh, or a Ganymede Archivist, throw the, you know, throw this on that, and it's just, uh, makes it even better. Um, I think it'd be pretty good to throw on, like, Dust Imp, even, because in that situation, you, you know, you force them to either, uh, just let you keep, uh, either let you keep reaping and stealing every turn or, or every time you activate disc, or they have to, you know, use their time to, to go kill this thing that's going to give you two amber when it dies. So pretty good. Uh, yeah, so so this, like I said, this deck did pretty well. Um, Falaposh of the Author's Tower, and uh, I, did, I did some reaping and stuff like that, but... Um, Really, it a lot of the way it won seemed to focus around uh, trying to steal from the opponent and, and push them into a situation where they ended up with a stockpile and then uh, use too much to protect on them and, uh, and gain amber, steal a lot of amber that way. So uh, not, not super focused on, on the board state. Um, again, you know, Mother, Succubus, um, there's, there's stuff that's nice to have on the board, but I never felt like, oh, I don't have, you know, any creatures on the board. I, I need to get creatures on the board in order to win. They were like, they were nice to have. They added some pressure. They, they were, if, you know, if I ended up using them, great, but, uh, but this deck doesn't really depend very much on creatures in order to win. Uh, there was a, a discussion thread in the Facebook group about, uh, you know, dealing with horsemen, and um, I haven't I haven't done that matchup, but I think it'd be interesting to see a deck like this go up against that because, uh, well, between between the board wipe stuff and um, just sort of being able to to do the. Uh, the leverage thing and, and kind of use your opponent's amber generation against them. Uh, I feel like this is a pretty strong contender and, and could probably do pretty well in that situation, but maybe someday I'll get to see. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and get out there and forge some keys.